In today's video, we're going to take a look at one of the two ways that we can use matrices to help us solve systems of equations. So today, looking at solving systems with matrix operations. First, we want to introduce this new type of matrix. It's not really as scary as it sounds. It's called the augmented matrix. And basically, what an augmented matrix is, is it's two matrices written as one. So for example, if we had uh, the system of equations 5x plus 2y equals 3 and 4x minus y equals 5. We've already looked at how this could be written as the axb matrix with the coefficients 5, 2, 4, negative 1, then the variables x, y, and then equals a solution 3, 5. Because if you were multiplying out the matrices on the left, you would get the solutions on the right. It's the same system of equations. Well, it would be sometimes nice to augment and look at this set of matrices as one matrix. We know the variables are x and y. So we'll put the 5, 2, 4, negative 1. And then we'll put a vertical line, and then 3, 5. And so what this augmented matrix shows is the two different matrices that we're interested in, the ones with the numbers, combined into one matrix. So this green matrix at the bottom, this is an augmented matrix, two matrices written as one. And the way they're separated is by that vertical bar in the middle. Okay, we're going to come back to the idea of an augmented matrix. Really quick, though, I want to review the process of how we solve by elimination. So taking a look at this example, x plus 2y equals 5, and 2x minus 3y equals negative 4. Now I want to review what we do in order to get these equa this equation solved. Just really the first part is what I'm really interested in. We're going to try and get opposites in front of the x. And the way we get opposites in front of the x is we multiply the first equation by negative 2 on both sides. So that's negative 2x minus 4y equals negative 10. I'm going to write that to the side. What I did is I multiplied the first equation by negative 2. And then what we do is we add this new equation to the other equation. Negative 2x and 2x is 0, so we get negative 7y equals negative 14. What we've done is we multiplied the first equation by negative 2, and then we added it to the second equation. And then from here, it solves really quick. We divide by negative 7, and y equals 2. We can plug it back into the original equation. Let's plug it back into the first equation, uh, x plus 2y, 2 times 2 equals 5. So x plus 4 equals 5. Subtract 4 from both sides, x equals 1. But what I'm really interested there is in this process that we just went through to solve it. We multiplied the first equation by negative 2, and we added that to the second equation. This process, this idea, is what we're going to use in order to solve the system of equations 
by using a matrix instead of elimination. And the way we can solve these systems of equations is using what is called reduced row echelon form. What reduced row echelon form is, is we have ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And depending on the size of the matrix, uh, that could vary a little bit. But basically, the idea is we'll have ones down the diagonal and zeros in all the other places. And then there might be more to the matrix after that. But what we're really interested in, maybe an augmented matrix, is you've got ones down that diagonal and then zeros above and below those ones. That is called reduced row echelon form. That reduced row echelon form is going to always be our goal as we solve these systems of equations using the matrix. We get that form that we want using several operations on the matrix. We can do any of these three steps, these three operations, in order to help us solve. The first possible operation that we can do is we can switch rows. Usually, we switch rows when we have a 0 in the spot we want a 1, and that becomes difficult. But sometimes, for a strategy purpose, we switch rows to make life easier. But we can do that. We can switch the rows, because the order of the equations doesn't really matter. We're going to notate switching rows by doing this type of notation. You'll see R1, a double arrow, R2. And what that means is we're switching row 1 and row 2. And we can switch any rows. You could see R3 and R5, switch row 3 and row 5. That's the first operation. The second operation we can do, and this is what we will do before the third, is we are going to multiply a row by a constant. So when we're multiplying by a constant, the goal of that, the purpose of that is to get a 1. That's going to be on that diagonal that I have highlighted in yellow there. If we multiply by a constant, our goal is to get a 1 there on that key point. And the way we show notationally that we're doing that is, let's say we want to take 1 half of row 3. So we'll write 1 half row 3 and then an arrow for row 3, meaning we take 1 half of row 3 and we replace row 3 now with the new row 3. The other operation that we do in order to get reduced row echelon form is we multiply a row by a constant. And add to another row. And this is probably one that feels the strangest about what's going on. Constant is in. There we go. But I want to look back at that elimination example. Highlighted in yellow, what we did is we multiplied first by negative 2 and added to the second equation. We multiplied by something and added it to another equation. That's what we're doing down here. Multiply a row times a constant and add to another row. And our goal there is the same goal in the other, is to eliminate a variable, or here, to get a 0. Notationally, the way we'll show that is uh, we might see negative 2 row 1 plus row 3 
stuck into row 3. So that means we take negative 2 times row 1. We add it to row 3 to come up with a new equation that represents row 3. Those are the three operations we're going to use to get our reduced row echelon form. Now, to kind of help guide us, these are some steps that we are going to take to organize those operations. The first step we're going to do is we are going to multiply to get 1 on the pivot point. Now, maybe I should redefine pivot going back up a bit. When we want 1's on the diagonal, that diagonal are the pivot points. So those 1's that are highlighted, those are the pivot 1's. We want to multiply to get 1 on the pivot point. Once we have a 1 on the pivot, then we can multiply the pivot by the opposite of a row and add it to that row. When we do that, we're going to get a 0 that we want. And then we keep repeating that process in each column for each pivot. So let's see if we can use these steps and use this idea to walk through a couple examples and see if we can find our solutions. Number three, we're going to start with a simple x plus 2y equals 5 and 2x minus 3y equals negative 4. This is that example that we did earlier using the elimination method. We're going to solve this same example now using pivots and reduced row echelon form. So first, we make a matrix to represent the coefficients of 1, 2, 2, negative 3. Then we're going to make an augmented matrix showing the answers 5, negative 4. Now, our first goal is to get, we'll go one column at a time. Our first goal is to get a 1 in the first pivot spot. Well, this one's nice. We already have a 1 in the first pivot spot. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at getting a 0 below it. We're going to multiply by the opposite of this row. So row 1 has the pivot. And if we multiply row 1 by negative 2, that's going to give us the opposite relationship we want so that we can add it to row 2. And we're going to put the result in row 2. It's going to give us a new matrix. So negative 2 times row 1 plus row 2. Going back up to the elimination, what we did is we multiplied the first, row 1, by negative 2 and added it to the second, row 2. It's the same exact thing we're doing here. Now, I like to show my work taking row 1 times negative 2. And I'm going to write little tiny numbers above row 2 to help me see what's going on. So in row 1, we've got a 1. We're going to multiply it by negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Going across, the 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. I'm going to circle these so we know these are my new numbers. 5 times negative 2, that's negative 10. 
we are going to add those to get our new row 2. So row 1 is still the same, 1, 2, 5. And now we can add these values together. 2 plus negative 2, that's 0. In the next entry, the next cell, we've got negative 3 plus negative 4. That's negative 7. And in the next entry, we've got negative 4 plus negative 10. That's negative 14. And so now we get this new matrix that we're ready to keep going with. The first row is done. We've got a 1 in the pivot and 0 elsewhere. Now we repeat in the next column. We need to get a 1 on the pivot. This time, going diagonally, the pivot is negative 7. So that's who we're interested in working with this time. We're going to multiply by something to make that 1. Always multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to take 1 over negative 7 times that row, times row 2 to get our new row 2. When we do that, the first row is unchanged, 1, 2, 5. The second row, we're going to take negative 1 7th. Negative 1 7th times 0 is 0. Negative 1 7th times negative 7 is 1. And negative 14 divided by negative 7 is positive 2. We've got the 1 on the pivot. We need to get zeros elsewhere. So we're going to multiply this row. We're talking about row 2 now has the pivot. Multiply row 2 by the opposite of 2, the opposite of this value, the 2 that we're getting rid of. The opposite of 2 is negative 2. We're going to add that to our first row to get our new first row. Let's try it and see what we get. Now again, to help show the work for this multiply and add step, I like to show the work. So we're going to take row 2, and I'm going to multiply it by negative 2, just like before we were multiplying row 1 by negative 2. 0 times negative 2 is 0. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So that's what we're going to add to get our new first row. 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. Keep it as an augmented matrix. The second row is still the same, 0, 1, 2. And now what's nice about this is now that I am in that reduced row echelon form, we've got ones in the diagonals, zeros above and below the diagonal. Our solution is these numbers that are left in the augmented matrix. The first variable equals the first value. The second variable equals the second value x equals 1, y equals 2. Notice that matches exactly what we got when we were doing the elimination. x equals 1, y equals 2. The reason we can pull these answers out is this augmented matrix represents, remember, 1 times x plus 0 times y equals 1. And the second row gives us 0x plus 1y equals 2. Well, multiplying by 0 just gives you 0. So really, we've got 1x equals 1, 1y equals 2. That's why it works. 
There we go. This process is a new process. It takes quite a bit of time to get used to going through these steps. Practice is the best way to get there. Practice, practice, practice. So I'm going to show you a few more examples. And then I'm going to leave you to practice, practice, practice this process of finding solutions. So we've got, let's say, 3x plus y minus z equals 2, x plus 2y plus z, 8. There we go. 2x plus y plus 2z equals 10. And we're going to solve this system by making it into a matrix and using reduced row echelon form. So as an augmented matrix, the coefficients are 3, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and then the augmented second part going down the column is 2, 8, 10. Now, our first goal is to get a 1 in the first pivot point. Now, there's a couple ways we can do that. One way we could do that is take row 1 and take 1 third of it to give you a new row 1, because 1 third of 3 would be 1. However, if we did that, we'd get fractions all the way through. Now, quite often with matrices, we get fractions along the way. And that is OK, and we can handle the fractions. But if we don't have to use fractions, I try and avoid it if I don't have to. One thing I notice is the row right below it already has a 1 in that first column. So this is where we're going to use that last trick that we have with matrix operations, is that we can switch rows. And so that's what I want to do here, is I'm going to take row 1 and switch with row 2 to give me a new matrix. That's going to give me that 1 in the pivot point I want. So when we switch the rows, now the top row is 1, 2, 1, 8. Now the second row is 3, 1, negative 1, 2. And the third row is 2, 1, 2, 10. So there's a couple ways we can go with these problems. Sometimes it helps to see, is there an easier way? Can we swap rows to accomplish the same thing, as long as it doesn't mess anything else up? In this case, it worked out quite nicely. We got that 1 on the pivot. Now we're going to try and get zeros below and above it. We've got two rows that need to be changed to zeros. So we're going to be doing two things first. We take the pivot in row 1 and multiply by the opposite. So for row 2, we're going to multiply by negative 3. It's the opposite of the 3. So we can add it to row 2 and get a new row 2. We're also going to fix the third row at the same time using much the same strategy. Row 1's our pivot, so we'll multiply by its opposite, negative 2, and add it this time to row 3. That's going to give us our new row 3. And to help us with that two-step process of multiply and add, we're going to show our work with these little numbers that I circle. So first, negative 3 times row 1. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. So let's see what we're building so far. The first row is unchanged, 1, 2, 1, 8. The second row, 3 plus negative 3 is 0. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. And 2 minus 24 is negative 22. 
Now the last row, the third row, we said we were multiplying row 1 by negative 2. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. So now when we add those numbers together, negative 2 and 2 is 0. Negative 4 and 1 is negative 3. 2 and negative 2 is 0. 10 and negative 16 adds to negative 6. Now we will notice that we have exactly what we want in that first column, a 1 in the pivot, zeros below it. That's what we like to see for our column. So now we'll move on to the next column. In the next column, we need a 1 on the pivot point. Going diagonally, that's in the center. We have negative 5 in there. So we're going to take that row. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, negative 1 fifth. And that's going to give us our new row 2. You might notice these are going to take up a little bit of paper. And that's OK. First row is still the same, 1, 2, 1, 8. Third row is the same, 0, negative 3, 0, negative 6. What's different is that center row, we're taking 1 fifth of it. 1 fifth of 0 is 0. Negative times a negative is a positive. 5 over 5 is 1. Negative times a negative is a positive, so we get 4 fifths. And finally, the last one, 22 fifths. Quite common with these matrix operations to get fractions as we work through them, and that's OK. So now that we've got the 1, where we want it, we need to get zeros above and below it. So we're going to do that by multiplying this time row 2 by opposites. So in the first row, the opposite of 2 is negative 2. We're going to add that to row 1 to get a new row 1. The third row, we're going to take our pivot in row 2, and we're going to multiply it by positive 3 this time, because that's the opposite. Add it to row 3 to get a new row 3. And so let's look what that's going to give us. The second row is going to be unchanged. 0, 1, 4 fifths, 22 fifths. Let's see what happens when we do row 1. Negative 2 times row 2. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 4 fifths. 2 times 4 is 8, so that's negative 8 fifths. And negative 2 times 22 is negative 44 fifths. You do need to know how to add, subtract, and multiply, and divide fractions. So what's this going to give us for our new row 1? 1 plus 0 is 1. Negative 2 and 2 is 0. 1 minus 8 fifths. 1 is 5 fifths. I write that in pink here. 1 is 5 fifths. So 5 minus 8 is negative 3 fifths. And 8, written as fifths, to have a common denominator, that's 40 fifths. So 40 minus 44, that's going to be negative 4 fifths. All right, to do the third row, we said we wanted to multiply by 3. So 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12 fifths. And 3 times 22 is 66 fifths. And so when we add together, 0 plus 0 is 0. 3 and negative 3, that's 0. 
0 plus 12 fifths is 12 fifths. And that negative 6 written over 5 is going to be negative 30 fifths, getting that common denominator. So we've got 66 minus 30, that's 33, 36 fifths. So I'm going to keep scrolling as we keep working. Our second row is good. We've got that 1 on the pivot and zeros everywhere else. So now we go to our third column now, where we see 12 fifths. We need that to be a 1. So to get it to be a 1, we'll multiply by the reciprocal, which is 5 twelfths times row 3 to get our new row 3. Everything else is still the same. The first row is 1, 0, negative 3 fifths, negative 4 fifths. The second row is 0, 1, 4 fifths, 22 fifths. The third row is 0. Now we're taking 5 twelfths. 0, 0. 5 twelfths times 12 fifths is 1. 5 twelfths times 36 fifths might need a little scratch paper. 36 fifths times 5 twelfths. That's kind of nice because the fives divide out. And 36 divided by 12 is 3. So we've got a 3 for that last cell. Now that we've got that 1 on the pivot, we want to make zeros above and below it. We get those zeros by multiplying by opposites. So we take row 3, that's our pivot, and we're going to multiply by the opposite of row 1, which is positive 3 fifths. Add it to row 1 and stick it into a new row 1. To get the second row to work, we take our pivot in row 3 and multiply by the opposite of row 2. The opposite of row 2 is negative 4 fifths. And we're going to add that to row 2 to get our new row 2. And so what matrix will that give us? Well, row 3 is unchanged, so that's 0, 0, 1, 3. Let's look at the other rows to see what happens. We're taking 3 fifths of row 3. So 3 fifths times 0 is 0. 3 fifths times 0 is 0. 3 fifths times 1 is 3 fifths. And 3 fifths times 3, 3 times 3 is 9 fifths. And so when we add those, 1 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 3 fifths times negative 3 fifths, that's 0. And negative 4 fifths plus 9 fifths, that's 5 fifths, which reduces to 1. In the second row, we're taking negative 4 fifths now. Negative 4 fifths times 0 is 0. Negative 4 fifths times 0 is 0. Negative 4 fifths times 1 is negative 4 fifths. And negative 4 fifths times 3. 4 times 3 is 12, so that's negative 12 fifths. Now we add those together. In the second row, 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 4 fifths and 4 fifths is 0. And 22 minus 12 is 10 fifths. 10 over 5 reduces to 2. And now after all that work, you see now we've got 1's on the diagonals, 0's everywhere else. We are in reduced row echelon form, and we can pick out our solutions for x, y, and z right off of the augmented matrix. x equals 1, y equals 2, z equals 3, written as an ordered triplet in alphabetical order if you prefer, we have our final solution. 
Again, this is a process that requires practice to kind of learn where to go next, what to do next. Don't skip steps. Show your work. Don't squeeze it all into one line. Be willing to use up some space and use up some paper. Walk through the process. Get a 1 on the pivot. Get zeros above and below it. 1 on the pivot, zeros above and below it. As we do this process, it's not uncommon to come across some special cases. Where we end up with all zeros, which means there's no pivot, in the last row. If we end up with all zeros in the last row, those are the same special cases of elimination where we had either 0 equals 0 or 0 equals a number. There is either going to be no solution or infinite solutions. So let's look at a couple examples to see if we can tell what to do when these zeros come up in the last row, giving us no pivot to work with. But we try x plus y plus z equals 5. 2x minus 3y minus 2z equals 1. And 3x minus 2y minus z equals negative 1. Writing this as an augmented matrix, we have our matrix 1, 1, 1, 5, 2, negative 3, negative 2, 1, 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1. Now we just start putting it in reduced row echelon form. We've already got the 1 that we want in our first pivot. That's nice. So we can start multiplying row 1 by opposites to clear the other rows. In row 2, we're multiplying by negative 2 and adding that to row 2 to get our new row 2. In row 3, we're taking row 1 and multiplying it by negative 3, adding it to row 3 and getting our new row 3. So we didn't change the first row at all. It still is 1, 1, 1, 5. The second row, though, the second row, we're taking row 1 times negative 2. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So when we add these together, 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 3 and negative 2 is negative 5. Negative 2 and negative 2 is negative 4. 1 and negative 10 is negative 9. The third row, we're taking the pivot row times negative 3. So 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. So when we add those to get our new row 3, 3 and negative 3 is 0. Negative 2 and negative 3 is negative 5. Negative 1 and negative 3 is negative 4. And negative 1 and negative 15 is negative 16. Continuing on then, we've got the 1 that we want, zeros everywhere else. So now we look at our next pivot point. We've got the zeros here and here. Now we're looking for a 1 in the center. We want row 2 to have a 0 in it. We multiply by the reciprocal of 5, which is negative 1 fifth, to get our new row 2. 
So what's that going to give us? First row is unchanged, 1, 1, 1, 5. The second row, we're taking 1 fifth times that row. 0 times anything is 0. Negative times a negative is a positive 5 fifths, which is 1. Negative times a negative is a positive 4 fifths. And a negative times a negative is a positive 9 fifths. And the third row is unchanged. 0, negative 5, negative 4, negative 16. Now that we've got a 1, we want zeros everywhere else above and below the 1. Well, to do that, we multiply by opposites. So our pivot's row 2. To fix row 1, we multiply by the opposite of what's in row 1, negative 1. Add it to row 1 to get our new row 1. To fix row 3, we take row 2, the pivot row, and multiply by the opposite, which is positive 5. Add it to row 3 to get our new row 3. And let's see what that's going to give us. Row 2 is the unchanged row this time, so I'm going to fill that in. 0, 1, 4 fifths, 9 fifths. To get row 1 to work out, we're going to multiply by negative 1. 0 times negative 1 is 0. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 4 fifths times negative 1 is negative 4 fifths. And 9 fifths times negative 1 is negative 9 fifths. Adding those together, 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1, written as a common denominator, that's 5 fifths. So 5 minus 4 is 1 fifth. And 5, written with a common denominator of 5, is 25 fifths. So 25 minus 9 is 16 fifths. In the third row then, third row we said we were multiplying by 5. That's nice, because that's going to clear out the fraction. 0 times 5 is 0. 1 times 5 is 5. 4 fifths times 5 is 4. And 9 fifths times 5 is 9, clearing out those denominators. So when we add 0 plus 0 is 0. 5 minus 5 is 0. Negative 4 and 4 is 0. And negative 16 and 9 is negative 7. Now normally here, we would look for our next pivot. But it's a 0. We can't multiply 0 by its reciprocal 1 over 0, because we can't have 0 in the denominator. We can't get this row to have a 1 in the pivot. So what does this third equation represent? Well, this third equation represents 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals negative 7. Well, 0 times anything is 0 equaling negative 7, which cannot be. If I have all zeros equal to a number, we say there is no solution, because there is no value for x, y, and z that will make it work in all three equations. No matter what we pick for x, y, and z, 0 will never equal negative 7. So that's our first special case, no solution. Let's look at one more example. This time we're going to solve x plus 3y minus 2z equals 4, 2x minus 2y plus z equals negative 1, and 3x plus y minus z equals 3. So first to solve this, we need to set up our augmented matrix representing the coefficients and the solutions. 1, 
3, negative 2, 4 is the first solution. 2, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 3, 1, negative 1, 3. And again, we're going to start to go through our reduced row echelon process. We want to get a 1 in the first spot, which we already have. That's really nice. So we're going to get zeros below it by multiplying by opposites. So row 1 is the pivot. We're going to multiply by negative 2, the opposite of what's in that row, and add it to row 2 to get our new row 2. I'm using the wrong color, huh? Let's do it in green. Negative 2 times row 1 plus row 2 to get our new row 2. The third row has a positive 3 in front, so we're going to multiply negative 3 times the pivot row 1 plus the row 3 to get our new row 3. And that's going to start to build our new matrix. The first matrix is unchanged in the first row. 1, 3, negative 2, 4. The second row, though, that's where we start doing some work. We say we're going to multiply the pivot row by negative 2. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So adding those together, 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 2 and negative 6 is negative 8. 1 and 4 is 5. And negative 1 and negative 8 is negative 9. In the third row, we're multiplying by negative 3 times the pivot row. So 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And so when we add those together, 3 and negative 3 is 0. 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Negative 1 and 6 is positive 5. Get rid of that dot. And 3 and negative 12 is negative 9. Continuing on then, we've got that 1 and zeros in the first column. In the second column then, we bring our attention to the pivot at negative 8. So we need to get that 8 to be a 1. We multiply by the reciprocal of negative 8, which is negative 1 8 times row 2 that we're working on to get our new row 2. So the first row is unchanged, 1, 3, negative 2, 4. The second row, we're dividing by 8, so that's 0. Negative times a negative is a positive 8 eighths, or 1. Negative times a positive is a negative. 5 over 8. And a negative times a negative is a positive 9 over 8. And the last row unchanged, 0, negative 8, 5, and negative 9. So now that we've got the 1 in the pivot spot, we want zeros above and below. So. We're taking row 2, our pivot row, and multiplying by the opposites. In row 1, that's negative 3. Added to row 1 to get the new row 1. Again, it should be in green. Here we go, negative 3, row 2, plus row 1 to get the new row 1. In the, sec the third row, we need to multiply the pivot row by the opposite of negative 8, which is positive 8 plus row 3 into row 3. And let's see what that gives us for our new matrix. So the second row is unchanged. That's the pivot row. 0, 1, negative 5 eighths, 9 eighths. To get the first row, we were multiplying by negative 3. So the pivot row times negative 3. 0 times anything is 0. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15 eighths. 9 times negative 3 is negative 27 eighths. 
So when we add, 0 and 1 is 1. 3 and negative 3 is 0. 2 written as a common denominator, that's negative 16 eighths. So negative 16 plus 15 is negative 1 eighth. And 4 written with a denominator of 8 is 4 times 8 is 32 eighths. So 32 minus 27 is 5 eighths. In the third row, we were multiplying by 8, which is nice because it clears the denominators. 0 times 0, 0 times anything is 0. 1 times 8 is 8. Negative 5. The 8's divide out. And 9 eighths times 8 is 9. And so what that gives us is 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 8 and 8 is 0. 5 and negative 5 is 0. Negative 9 and 9 is 0. And again, we run into the problem that we can't get a pivot. Because we can't multiply 0 by anything and get an answer of 1. 0 times anything is always 0. So what does this mean? Again, we think about the implication here that 0x, looking at the last line, plus 0y plus 0z equals 0. And all of those zeros add and multiply to 0 equals 0. But what's different this time is we got a true statement. This always works. 0 always equals 0. So this time, we actually do have solutions. And we're going to dig a bit to find out what those infinite solutions are. We're not just going to say there's infinite solutions. We're going to clearly define how those infinite solutions behave. And to do that, we're going to write the other two rows as equations. So this top row, let's keep with our orange thing. This top row is 1x plus 0y, I don't need to write that, minus 1 8 z equals 5 8 The second row has 0 x's, but it has 1 y minus 5 8 z equals 9 8 The third row, all, we don't know anything about the z's. And so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a new variable, a dummy variable, and we're going to call it t. You'll remember we talked about dummy variables really briefly all the way back in chapter 1 when we were talking about parametric equations. The dummy variable builds each variable individually to give us our lines. So z is our dummy variable t. Then what we're going to do is we're going to solve the other two equations for the variables x and y. We can do that really nicely by simply adding the z part. So we'll add 1 8 z to both sides of the first equation. Add 5 8 z to both sides of the second equation. And when we do that, we get x equals 5 8 plus 1 8 times z, which is the dummy variable t. We have to use a dummy variable. We can't use one of the other variables. y is equal to 9 8 plus 5 8. And then we use the dummy variable t. z is just equal to that dummy variable t. And so we have infinite solutions to this equation. We can pick any value for z, or that dummy variable t. Plugging that into the other two will give us a value that works in the other two equations. Often you'll see it written as an ordered triplet x, y, z. So x is 5 8 plus 1 8 t. y is 9 8 plus 5 8 t. And z is just equal to t. So if there's infinite solutions, we have to first 
write each of the equations out, solving for those variables. And then we introduce a new dummy variable for the variable that's not represented. So a brand new process here. It's not really like anything else we've ever seen before, this idea of finding reduced row echelon form. We first need to multiply to get a 1 on the pivot. Then we multiply the opposite of a row and add 2, get 0 above and below the 1, and repeat that process until we have that reduced row echelon form. This process is new. It takes practice to master, showing your work, keeping it clean and organized. Take the time to do so on today's practice problems. Come to class tomorrow with questions, and we'll see you then.